you so much for joining us on the Style Symposium. I am Dr. Sandra Colts Medici, and I'm joined today by one of my good friends. I'm so excited to talk to her today. She is on the East Coast right now, but she is super global. Her name is Omena Boachi, and she is a fashion stylist and lifestyle journalist, the most best person to talk about what we're talking about today. So thank you for joining me. No, thank you for having me, Sandra. Yes, of course. Well, so we actually, um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, go back to the Sweet Bites with Center podcast. She is one of my earliest guests on that podcast as well. And she has some fun tidbits about social media on there too. But today we're talking about fashion and beauty and leadership and how that impacts women in business. And so um, she has done so many things, whether it's being featured and her work in, in style, stylist, um, BBC News. I mean, there's She's done it. I think Martha Stewart, I remember you were working with her at one point. Um, so she's been around the block as far as being with high profile celebrities and also, you know, per creating um, some of the looks that I know that we all didn't even know um, we were following at the time. So um, when you think about some of the trends that we are going to either see in the fall or might kind of start peaking, you know, in about 2022, in the beginning of 2022, what do you think um, we should be looking for? Oh, there's so many great trends coming up this fall, I would say. Um, one that I particularly love is mono chic. So you're literally wearing, you know, one color. But um, I mean, it's, it's not plain, Jane. When I say one color, it's kind of, you, you might think quite plain. But, you know, you can make it fun. So if I'm, for example, today I'm wearing polka dots, but if I was wearing all red, I would be wearing a red shoe, I would be wearing a red hat, so I'd be wearing a red bag. So it's really making this color, making the most of the color that you're wearing and wearing it with your accessories, wearing it for um, literally your accessories from your shoes to your handbag, just making the most of that one color, that's a big trend. Um, glitz is another big trend for fall. So that, think sequins, think, um, you know, patent, think, um, just literally glitzy. Anything that you see is sparkly is um, is a big trend for fall. So that's something that you can add. And it's not necessarily wearing it all over. So you could go with a glitzy top. You could do glitzy pants. Um, you could even do like a sparkly shoe. Um, so that's something that you can add in. What's another big trend? Um, military is another trend for um, fall. So um, if you think khakis, if you think um, you know, like aviator jackets, that kind of thing. So anything that kind of falls into that sort of military theme, that's another big trend for fall as well. So a lot of exciting things to look forward to. I have a lot to buy then because I have none of that in my closet. I think, um, yeah, I've, probably got, I've probably got military and I've probably definitely got things of all sorts of colors. I love color. Um, so yeah, yeah there's probably two trends that I can pull off. Definitely. Well, so I know that in our um, conversation with different people inside of this style symposium um, event, we are talking about women in business specifically. And so I actually posed this question to you right before we got on. And I said, you know, what elements can people, um, can women use in fashion to move forward their authenticity in business. And that could be anything, you know, whether it's um, their personality and something that they want to bring out or in fashion. So where, where, where do you fall in there um, as far as something you could give as far as a tip for women um, to use their fashion to project their authenticity in business? I think it's um, really important to dress for where you're going. So for example, if you're going to a meeting, I'm not saying put on a suit. But I'm saying, you know, look smart. You're not going to go in, you know, trainers or sneakers and track bottoms. Um, if you're going to a cocktail party for a certain launch of something, you know, put on a cocktail dress kind of. And, you know, I, I often I like bright colors. So I like to um, not necessarily stand out. But I like to go against the grain, so I'm not going to necessarily wear black to a cocktail party. Um, at the same time, I think it's important to be your authentic self. So don't overdo it. Like, don't just go in yellow for the sake of it. Um, but I think definitely dress for the occasion. Um, and I think that can help you along the way. Perfect. Well, so where do you draw inspiration? Because as you're you know, maneuvering through whether it's your personal style that you're, you know, talking about trends, you know, as a writer, or you are creating different things, different looks for different people that you're working with, where do you pull that inspiration from if it's not something that you're given, you know, like not something like, hey, we have to stick with this, but you're, you're kind of given that like freedom to say, go and create, like what, where do you find your inspiration from then? You know, I think I draw inspiration from so many places. I live in New York 
and there you step I step out of my apartment and there's amazing people dressed amazingly all around me and um, so I think I definitely draw inspiration from people on that I see on the streets um, I also draw inspiration from street style so you know I'm constantly flicking through Instagram you know I follow different influencers kind of looking at what they're wearing um, and then also from the runway show so I always like to see as I was saying what trends are coming up what are designers doing on the runway how can I interpret that into my style or into the styling that I'm doing well so speaking of this and I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this but you brought something up about the runway shows mm -hmm. and during the pandemic there was kind of this like how do we have a runway show without having an audience or having a you know a, a real show mm -hmm. and you know you saw like animation you saw like um I remember I saw kind of like I don't know if it was like dolls at one point for one designer um how do you think that's gonna kind of evolve do you think that runway shows will stay traditional or will they infuse some of what that kind of like landscape of online inventiveness that we kind of saw during the pandemic and keep that element as well yeah i think for fall coming up and um, there's a lot of shows that are in person again um which is nice i'm not sure if i'm going but you know it is nice um and i think you know going back to last year when we were at, in a pandemic or we kind of still are i suppose but when we all the shows were um virtual and people were doing presentations online i think so many designers learned from that and realized that you know it's just as effective you know people are are watching online you can almost actually pull a larger audience because obviously when um shows are in person the capacity is limited you know and there's certain people who need to be on this the front row and only so many people can be on the front row there can only be so many people standing however when you have a virtual platform you can actually pull a larger audience so i think there are a lot of pros and cons um to having it virtually um, again, that in-person aspect of actually really seeing how clothing is moving, really being able to see, you know, exactly what it's made of. Um, and just generally the atmosphere, even, you know, just what the really being able to see what the designer is trying to interpret to those who are attending the show. Maybe you sometimes, maybe there are some elements that you lose um, when it is virtual, but there's also a lot that you gain. Um, so I think going forward, maybe designers will try and weigh up, you know, the pros and cons and see what they can implement and, and you know, what will work for them in terms of grabbing their audience. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, you brought up so many things as far as like how it moves and yeah. it, just the ambiance, like you said, like rubbing your shoulder next to whoever that is in the front row, you know, like that kind of drama um, isn't always transmitted um, like we are right now with our drama online, <laughs> you know, so um, what do you think are some tips that you um, that you know of that would help um, people who don't consider themselves to be really stylish, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of just wear the same thing all the time because they don't want to go outside of their comfort zone, but maybe need to develop their own personal style. What's kind of the first step for someone who is trying to figure that out? I think I always recommend like thinking of a celebrity that you like. Um, I don't know who that might be for yourself, but then kind of seeing, you know, how they style themselves, you know, what are they wearing? And maybe it may be if they have a similar shape, maybe seeing how you can wear similar things. That's almost like having your own, your own stylist because all these celebrities are styled by someone. So yeah, if there's someone that you particularly admire, just kind of looking at the kind of things they wear, how they're putting it together and see if you can implement that into your style. I love that because they do all have someone styling them unless you are Stella McCartney or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or someone who like the row, you know, you've got the sisters who are just impeccable. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that that's a great step is to just look at who you, you gravitate toward because yeah. they are being styled. And so it's kind of like having a free stylist, um, you know, already at the ready. So what do you think as far as when you are working? Cause you know, as um, you know, a, a lifestyle journalist, like you are constantly working with different editors. And so you have kind of this body of work, but you had to start somewhere too. And yeah. so you're kind of like, um, a small business, if you will. Um, so where did you kind of see yourself kind of making a transition as far as being a leader in your industry? I think, um, so you put it correctly, you know, I, did, I didn't start out where I am now. And I think I, I, I started 
by assisting people. Um, I'd done a ton of internships. And during that time, I, I worked with some great leaders. I was really able to admire them, really able to see their workflow, really able to see their process. And that taught me. Um, and I think for where I am now, it really kind of taught me the leadership skills that um, I want to have and how, you know, how I want to be a leader from seeing these people, from seeing even mentors and people that I look up to. Um, it was really just observing the skills that um, I saw that they had and that I liked. Well, so in fashion, it's kind of, I mean, it's not necessarily like the blatant out there thing, but we all know that there have been way more people who have kind of advanced their fashion career in certain categories. And, you know, women probably are, you know, I would say second in line um, and minorities probably third in line in that kind of um, vein, as far as like, when you think about like minority models and, you know, Tyra Banks or whomever um, that kind of like paved the way, you know, Iman and things like that, uh, or people like that. And so when you think about really solidifying yourself in a fashion industry, you know, if that's like your career goal, what makes um, you stand out more than other people? Like what skill do you think that you possess that other people still need to kind of like get in their bag? Uh, oh, that I possess personally? I, I don't know if I um, possess it. I would hope, like to think I do. Um, but I think it's really important to be um, individual. It's really important to have, possess individuality. You don't want to be a clone. Even, even when you're writing, you know, you don't want to be writing things that are out there that everyone already knows. Really thinking, okay, how can I make this article different? What can I bring to this? Even if it's a topic that everyone knows about, what can I personally bring to this article that's different? And again, that goes for styling, you know, being individual in that sense. So how can I style something to really make it capture people's eyes, to really make it different? If Even if the client says, you know, we just want a red dress, what kind of different red dress am I going to bring that's really going to work in this advertising campaign that's really going to make it pop? So I think it's really always trying to bring a sense of individuality to any project that you'll put on. Definitely. And that really um, goes into what we've been talking about recently is digital marketing. And I know that's a huge stretch, but it really does come down to what two things that people are trying to figure out these days, which are Instagram Reels and TikTok, because a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do. And yeah. you basically just gave people a roadmap. Take what you know and what is out there, which is all of those trending audio and sounds and stuff like that, and put your own spin on it and make it you, make your individuality stand out. And I think a lot of people think, oh, well, that's that sounds so easy. And I'm like, it is if you just put yourself out there. And I think that that's part of the, the problem holding a lot of people back, whether it's in styling themselves, moving forward in their business, whatever it might be, is that it's hard to take that first step. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things do you do to get over that like fear of like, whether it's rejection or, you know, I'm not going to be good enough at this, whatever. What, what are the things that you have used to overcome that kind of feeling? Um, I think confidence is key. And I think, um, even if you do get a rejection, you know, in something, it can it can propel you to something else, if that makes sense. So for example, you know, someone might tell me no in a certain situation, but then I'm going to try something else. And ultimately realizing that um, even if you are getting rejections for any particular thing, um, that it's not final, that you will, you know, re eventually reach your end goal because um, it's still pushing you. So I think perseverance is also key. Yes. Well, so my last question for you, because we could talk all day long about all the great things that you've done, but I want to know who are some of the designers that, you know, maybe we should be following on social media to kind of see maybe they're breaking through and they're not necessarily well known, or maybe they are staples that we should already be following on social media and why those people are making waves in the industry. Oh God, there's so many that I love. Um, do you know, when it comes to clothing, I love drama. So I love big shoulders. I love, you know, exaggeration. Um, and I think someone who's really getting that right for particularly for their um, collection, full collection coming up is um, Christopher John Rogers. I love, I don't know if you've seen his collection, but you know, all, he has a lot of drama at the moment. So he has the big shoulders, you know, the exaggerated hips, 
um, and I love all of that. <laughs> so that's someone I love. Um, who else? I think um, Agua by Agua Benedita. So she's a Colombian designer and she does sustainable wear. And another thing I love is prints um, and her clothing is absolutely amazing. She has some really amazing prints and dresses. Um, so she's someone else that I love. And a newer designer, well, not necessarily that new, but maybe not so, so well known is um, Sukenia. Um, that's another designer that I really like. So he's a black designer. It's spelled S-U-K-E-I-N-A. And again, um, the clothing just has drama and that's probably why I love it. So again, you know, larger pockets, um, exaggeration to the hips, exaggeration, you know, maybe a smaller waist and then kind of exaggerated um, A-line skirts and things like that. Um, so as you see, I, lo I love drama and, and any, any designer that kind of has, um, an exaggerated element, but also, you know, something that's different. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking for something that's plain. I like clothing that kind of stands out. Love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know that you were busy, 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 and we got you for this very, very short interview. So thank you so much. And for everybody watching um, the Style Symposium, uh, make sure to Google her. She's got articles everywhere online that you can partake and support. And I definitely know that um, you'll be seeing her style and you probably won't even know it's her style, but um, celebrities everywhere are rocking her looks. So thank you so much, Amanda, for joining me. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.